happen. Let's go down to Kokomo. Day 9, Saturday the 24th of October, at sea. None of us in our cabin drink, yet that seems to be no bar to our stateroom being the venue of choice for after hours parties. The best thing is, these get-togethers are usually instigated by one of the higher-ups, so it's not like we can really decline the invitation to host the event. We've had two this week already. There's a very strict alcohol policy in place on board, so they're never going to be wild. Plus, with Daisy, Becky, Andrea and myself usually in our pyjamas and lying in our respective bunks, it makes hard work for our guests to keep themselves entertained. It was a very multicultural affair last night, similar to the opening ceremony of the Olympics, with St Lucia, South Africa, Romania, India, Zimbabwe, the Philippines and of course the UK being represented. When everyone finally dispersed, just before dawn, there wasn't much time left for sleeping. As I was first awoken by the docking bell sounding, and then shortly after, I had to be up and dressed as I had a rendezvous with the US immigration officers to get my crewman's landing card updated so that I could go on shore leave in the States. It was the second night in a row that I'd had very little sleep, as a late finish the day before, then a 7am cabin inspection followed by my getting up an hour earlier than needed due to a communication problem with my clock over time changes, had left not much time for resting. Oh well, who needs sleep, right? The amount of time changes I've been through in the last few weeks is incredible. I'm surprised my watch is still working with all the winding back and forward. Last night, we skipped forward another hour and after Bermuda, we'll gain it again on our sail back. I'm sure the clocks are due to change from summertime soon also. I just hope someone reminds me when. My short excursion in Boston was rather frustrating. I enjoyed dim sums in a speciality Chinese restaurant with Ian, casino cash desk manager from the Philippines, where I was the only non-Oriental patron in a room of about 200. The food was good, but I have no idea what the hell I ate. I then trailed round for the next hour, desperately trying to find a costume for the 31st. Being in America, land of Halloween mania, I thought the hardest part of the task would be choosing between the different outfits on offer, but no dice. There wasn't one dress-up outfit to be found, despite hitting over 20 stores. Eventually, in TK Maxx, I managed to wriggle into a kid's princess dress. But you'll be pleased to know I left without it, as it was A, $45.99, B, impossible to sit down in, and I need to sit down to deal certain games, and C, looked ridiculous. I'll have to see if I can rustle up something in Bermuda, otherwise it will be the old toilet paper mummy trick. I'm embarrassed to admit that I was actually sad when I realised that I wouldn't be seeing the players I'd gotten used to dealing to over the last week anymore. I kept looking up, expecting to see them heading over to my table. Pippa, Stephen, Lyneth, Rob. Names change for privacy. And crazy loud drunk lady. I miss you all already. Come back again soon, please. I really am such a geek. I so need to get out more. On the brightest side of things, this week's inmates looked like a really cool bunch. I had the most fun ever dealing blackjack at the start of the night. No doubt helped by the fact that amongst my merry band of players, there was a really hot piece of eye candy. He's on board with his mum, which I'm not sure is a good thing or not. And then I had a busy game of roulette with all seven colours in action, even needing someone to chip for me at one stage. This is virtually unheard of, as we only have one roulette table on board, the mostly American clients preferring to play at one of our 15 card tables or roll the dice at the craps table. The cherished purple shirt made its public debut for the first time last night, and it definitely seemed to be a better tip generator than its unflattering orange predecessor. I guess it's hard to be too scientific about it, as with a new group of potential tippers to base the studies on. But put it this way, I got propositioned four times tonight. In the previous seven days, 
I got hit on by one really drunk guy that I actually saw making out with a bar stool after he staggered away from my table. And crazy loud drunk lady, who kept saying how adorable I was and kept asking to take me home with her with a predatorial look in her eye. Purple shirt one, orange zero. The new customers possibly got a bit of a rush of blood to the head yesterday evening, or quite possibly, more accurately, too much alcohol to the brain, as they filled the Dawn Casino Club with vigour early on. But approaching midnight, the floor was starting to look deserted. You're going to have to do better than that, I'm afraid, guys. This place is a marathon, not a sprint. I like to be entertained when I'm working, not left sitting by myself, staring hypnotically at the slots. With today being a sea day, I'm pretty much restricted to the casino all day and night. 11.20am until 3.40am. The sound of the water, constantly sloshing on the bulkhead, millimetres from where I lie, makes it difficult to sleep at times. It was enough to get me up out of bed early, with time to take in both a row in the gym and a run around Deck 13, my current favourite hangout. And that's all for Day 9. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in for Day 10's antics tomorrow. Same time, same place. Well, not literally, because this ship never stops. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a day. And if you're enjoying it, like and share it too. Thank you.